Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, today we're going to learn a new topic. Uh, under, still under chapter number 2, estimation. This is the second part of uh, chapter number 2, which is interval estimation. Right, so for introduction, interval estimation is actually uh, an interval estimate of parameter theta in an interval form so the 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 form that uh, consists in interval estimation is we have a lower uh, limit of confidence limit and upper confidence limit so this is the parameter theta that we're going to estimate so the interval estimation given of a given parameter are not unique so it can be um, many value right depend on the range of the variance and uh, the mean population mean right so the range of value within each population parameter lies within a, a certain degree of freedom so it depends certain degree of freedom right so uh, to describe the amount of uncertainty associated with the sample estimate of a population parameter so this is the uh, the the objective of interval estimation we want to describe the amount of uncertainty associated to the se sample uh, statistic of the population parameter each interval is constructed with regard to a given confidence level so we will base on some uh, significant level based on alpha which is and uh, whether 90 percent or 95 percent or 99 percent or etc etc so the the idea of confidence level or confidence interval or interval estimation is based on point estimate plus minus margin of error so this is the idea of the basis of interval estimation we are going to plus uh, point estimate and margin of error or minus point estimate and margin of error so in we're going to learn uh, estimation interval estimation on population mean and population variance so this part is a population mean so in population mean we have two cases which is when we know the population variance is known and another uh, case is uh, when the population variance is unknown right so based on the theorem number one this is based on known variance when the population variance are known right so if x bar is the mean of random sample of size n from a population with a known variance right known population variance so 100 percent 1 minus alpha confidence interval for mu for population mean is given by the point estimate minus uh, z value z value alpha divided by 2 since we are going to have a two-sided uh, distribution and the margin of error which is uh, variance uh, sorry the sigma divided by square root of n so this is what we call as uh, as a standard error so this is a standard error this is a standard error the whole thing here is what we call as a margin of error so this is a margin of error right so this is a point estimate right so this is the way the, the interval estimation so this is a lower but the first part is a lower confidence limit lower confidence limit and uh, second part here we call as a upper confidence limit so where z alpha divided by 2 is a z value leaving an area of alpha divided by 2 to the right side right so in some cases um, population variance is known but the sample is from a normal non-normal population right so we can apply the central limit theorem when the sample size is large enough right? we can simply substitute the variance uh, this, uh, the, uh, this is a population standard deviation to the pop sample standard deviation we just replace 
uh, the population standard deviation to sample standard deviation. This is when we have a non-normal population, but we have a large sample size. So we can use central limit theorem to apply uh, the first theorem to the second uh, to the uh, to sample statistics. Right now, look at example number one. So example number one. So let theta hat be a statistic that normally distributed with mean equal to theta and standard error equal to sigma theta hat. So the find confidence interval for theta that pose a confidence coefficient equal to 1 minus theta. So basically, so we know uh, for normal population, for normal population, right, with mean equal to theta and standard deviation, so sorry, standard error equal to sigma theta hat is a standard normal distribution. Right, so here we let me put some notation here. We already know mu is equal to theta hat, which is also equal to x bar, and the standard deviation is equal to standard error. Uh, this is a standard error is equal to sigma over square root of n. So this is based on theorem number one, chapter number one, uh, sampling distribution. So then we have a standard error z equal to x bar minus mu divided by square uh, sigma over z n. So this is having a normal standard normal distribution with mean equal to 0 and variance equal to 1. Right. So now, let me pull down this a bit. Right. So now, let probability of we want to find uh, the z value probability of negative z alpha divided by 2 right? and then this is a z z alpha divided by 2 is equal to 1 minus alpha so this is because we want to find both side of distribution curve so this is a standard error a standard normal distribution so the, the area on the left hand side is a uh, negative z alpha divided by 2 alpha divided by 2 and the right hand side is z alpha divided by 2 and the area on the middle is 1 minus alpha so this is the area this one is alpha divided by 2 and this area is alpha divided by 2 right so by the definition of z equal to x x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n so this is x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n this is z alpha divided by 2 and this is negative z alpha divided by 2 this is a probability that we want to find so this is uh, will lead to 1 minus alpha so let's move alpha and sigma over square root of n over to, to both sides. So this is going to be x bar minus mu. Uh, no more divide. Right? So we move to the both side. So negative z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n. Z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n. So this is a probability. The new formula for this probability solution right so then uh, we move the permit point estimate x bar we're going to leave uh, negative mu in the middle so this one should be uh, negative z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n and minus uh, x bar and this one same z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n minus x bar right 
so this is 1 minus alpha so we move the value of negative value on the middle we leave just mu inside the 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 equation so this is going to be right the the, the sign of less than is going to be changed this is going to be x bar minus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over sorry this is um divided by 2 sigma over square root of n and this one should be x bar plus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n so this is a probability or minus alpha so <clears throat> then we can arrange the equation to be look like nicer so mu less than x bar minus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n and this is going to be x bar plus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n if you can notice this is the value as in theorem number 1 so we know that mu hat uh, sigma ha uh, theta hat is equal to x bar right so theta hat we know theta hat is equal to x bar and then a standard error uh, sigma theta hat is equal to sigma over square root of n so we're going to substitute this value into the equation substitute uh, to this equation right so then we're going to get the probability of uh, theta hat minus z alpha divided by 2 standard error theta hat this is the this is not going to be mu anymore this is a theta right so because we want to estimate the interval estimate for theta so this is theta hat plus z alpha divided by 2 and the standard error of uh, theta hat is, is equal to 1 minus alpha so the upper limit of this confidence interval is uh, sorry this is the lower confidence limit and this is uh, upper confidence limit right so this is what we the as uh, this is for example number one right so let's move to example number two so if a random sample of size n equal to 20 right from a normal population with a variance equal to sigma squared equal to 222 25 so from this uh, statement this is what we uh, the variance the population variance is known so we know the value of population variance and the mean is equal to x bar equal to 64.3 so we want to construct a 95 percent confidence interval for the population mean mu so just let jot down the important value n equal to 20 and x bar equal to 64.3 and the variance is equal to 225 and of course the standard deviation should be the square root of variance which is equal to 15 and 95 percent confidence interval right is 1 minus alpha 100 percent so alpha should be equal to 0 0.05 right so based on theorem number one based on theorem one right so the the confidence interval or the interval estimation is x bar plus minus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n when the variance is known so this is the probability value that we want to find so the area under the curve since this is a normal population right so on the right hand on the left hand side this is a negative z alpha divided by 2 and this is z alpha divided by 2 the area here consists of 0 0.025 
this area also 0 0.025 because the area inside here is 95% so we'll leave 5% on the both side right so which is equal to 2.5% this is also to 2.5% right so let me move this one so now so okay, we can expand this equation so this one should be probability of x bar is equal to at 64.3 let, let uh, we expand it first z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n this is mu x bar plus z alpha divided by 2 this is sigma over square root of n this is equal to 95 percent so we substitute the value of uh, x bar inside the equation so this is 64.5 minus z alpha divided by 2 z 0 0.025 is equal to neg 1.96 right so negative z 0 0.025 is equal to negative 1.96 so this is 1.96 and this is sigma is equal to 15 over square root of n is square root of 20 right so 65 64.5 again the same thing plus 1.96 this is 15 over square root of 20 so equal to 95 percent so when we solve this value this value on the lower confidence limit and upper confidence limit it will lead us to um, probability of uh, 57.7 mu 70.9 equal to 95 percent so from here we know we can conclude that we have we have 95 percent confidence that the population mean is between 57.7 and 70.9 right so this is how we solve example number two right so now let's move to example number three so in example number three a study of 40 statistics lecturer right statistics 40 statistics lecture shows that they spend on average 12.6 minutes marking student test paper so the first question is we need to find 90% confidence interval of the mean time or the mean time for all statistic paper when sigma population standard deviation is equal to 2.5 minutes so this is a situation when the variance is known assume the variable is normally distributed right so let's solve for the first part right oops for the first part let's say uh, we jot down the important value n equal to 40 and then we have x bar is equal to 12.6 and the sigma is equal to 2.5 so xi having a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to 2 point so this is a standard deviation is equal to 2.5 variance equal to 2.5 power of 2 right so where i equal to 1 2 until 40 so so now to find 90 percent confidence interval right so we use the theorem number one when the variance is known right uh, and the sample size is large 40 so x bar plus minus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n and we know the distribution that we want to find is 
the area on the middle is 90%. So the A's area should be 0 0.05 and this area is 0 0.05. Because in normal distribution, area on the left hand side are also equal to the area on the right hand side. This is alpha divided by 2, Z alpha divided by 2. Right. So we just need to substitute the value into the formula. So this is 12.6 minus Z 0.05 is equal to 1.645, right? By looking at a statistical table, right? So this one should be minus 1.645. And then uh, sigma is 2.5 divided by square root of 40. This is mu. This is the probability that we want to find. 12.6 plus 1.645. 2.5 divided by square root of 40. And this is equal to 90%. So when we solve for the lower confidence limit, it will become probability of 11.95. Right, and the upper confidence limit here should be equal to 13.25. So this is will lead to the probability of 0 0.9. So another form to write down the the confidence interval is uh, just a bracket 11.95, comma. This 11.95 is representing a uh, lower confidence limit and 13.25 will represent an upper confidence limit. Lower confidence limit, upper confidence limit. Right. So uh, let's look at B. Right. B. If a lecturer stated that they, uh, they spend on average, they spend on average. Uh, is one 15 minutes marking the test paper what would be your decision so since by looking at the confidence uh, interval or interval estimation that we have found here right the amount time uh, that he spent on marking a test paper is out of range of 90 percent confidence interval for mean for the population mean in other words uh, he will not be uh, the part of this sample right so so maybe he, he is a rare person right so that's how we answer example number three right so can we move down to example number four a certain medication is known to increase the pulse rate of the of the user the standard deviation of pulse rate is known to be 5 bit per minute. So this is a standard deviation. So standard deviation sigma equal to 5 bit per minute. Right. And then um, a sample of 30 and equal to 30 uh, user had an average pulse of uh, 100. For x bar is equal to 104. So we want to find 99% confidence interval of the true mean. So this is still we know this is a uh, situation when variance known, right? When variance known, so we can use the first formula, right? X bar plus minus z alpha divided by 2 square uh, sigma over square root of n. So this is x bar minus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n. This is the same formula plus z alpha divided by 2 sigma over square root of n. So the area that we want to find is 99%. So let's draw the distribution curve. Right, so this is the area negative z alpha divided by 2. This is z alpha divided by 2. This is this area consists of 99%. This area consists of 0 0.005. This area is also 0 0.005. Right, so 
let uh, so look at a statistical table zero z 0 0.005 is equal to 2.5758 right so we just need to plug in the value into the formula so this is going to be uh, 104 minus 2.5758 and this is uh, 5 over square root of 30 right the same value on the right hand side this is equal to 99 percent so we saw for the lower confidence limit it should be equal to 101.6486 and the upper confidence limit is 106.3514 so we can say that the we have 99 percent confidence that the a the population mean is between 101.6486 and uh, 106.3514 right so it should be very easy let's look at another example so we don't have any example this is example the last example for the first part so now look at theorem number two theorem number two says that uh, if this is a theorem or when you the uh, the variance is unknown when we don't know the value of population mean so the unknown population variance when x bar and s standard deviation sample standard deviation are the value of the mean and the sample standard deviation of a random sample of size n from a normal population then the interval estimation of population mean is x bar minus t alpha divided by 2 with n minus 1 degree of freedom multiplied with the standard error which is sample standard error standard deviation divided by square root of n same equation on the right hand side but we need to plus the value so this is the situation when the variance is unknown right so for theorem number one when the variant is known whether the sample size is more than 30 or less than 30 when the variance is known we use theorem number one when the variance is unknown when the sample size is uh, small which is less than 30 so the sample size here should be less than 30 this is is meant for small sample size right um, so let's look at the proving part so if you still remember in chapter number one right in chapter number one when we have a standard normal distribution right squared standard normal distribution divided by um, the chi squared we will have a t distribution so in chapter number one we have learned t distribution is equal to x bar minus mu divided by s over square root of and so if we put into the probability uh, situation so this is negative t alpha divided by 2 this is t t alpha divided by 2 this is 1 minus alpha so substitute the value of t here tx minus mu uh, this is s already sigma n right this is t alpha divided by 2 right so we move s over square root of n to the both side so we leave x bar minus mu this is t alpha divided by 2 multiply with s over square root of n and this is negative t alpha divided by 2 multiply with s over square root of n right so this is the probability so we want to leave mean population mean over there so it should be equal to if we remove all the value right it should be equal to x bar minus t alpha divided by 2 s over square root of n and this is x bar plus t alpha divided by 2 s over square root of n
this is 1 minus alpha since this is uh, the t distribution having n t distribution alpha n minus 1 degree of freedom right so here you should add n minus 1 degree of freedom right so remember t distribution came from a standard normal distribution so it has the same characteristic of a curve right so this is uh, the negative alt, t alpha divided by 2 and this is a t alpha divided by 2 this is 1 minus alpha right this is alpha divided by 2 alpha divided by 2 right so this is for theorem number 2 right so now look at example number 1 for theorem number 2 so an industrial designer want to determine the average of time it takes an adult to assemble an easy to assemble toy use the following data in minutes a random sample to construct 95 percent confidence interval for the mean of the population sample so here we have n equal to uh, basically 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, should be equal to 36. And if you calculate the value of point estimate here, x bar is equal to summation of x over n. Uh, this one should get 19.92. With a sample standard deviation is 5.73. Right. Right. Uh, so if you input the value into the calculator, right? So we will get uh, this value. Right. Say you you take out your calculator, you input all the value inside the calculator. So click on Shift One, and then uh, click on. Uh, sorry. So we need to click on AC. Click Shift One and then click on 4 and click 2 for standard uh, mean so this one should be 19.92 and we want to find for standard deviation shift 1 4 and click on standard deviation number 4 it should be equal to 5.73 right so since uh, the population variance is unknown in this example we do not know we do not know the population variance so unknown uh, variance so once we do not know the population variance we will apply theorem number two so since n equal to 36 x bar is equal to 90.92 and standard deviation sample standard deviation is equal to 5.73 so we just input to the formula so this is a formula that we already calculate uh, uh, proof in theorem number two this is alpha divided by two n minus one s over square root of n this is mu x bar minus and uh, this is plus t alpha divided by two n minus one s over square root of n so this is a 95 percent so let's draw a distribution curve right so a distribution curve here in the middle is 95 percent right so this is going to be 0 0.025 and this is 0 0.025 negative t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 so t 0 0.025 n minus 1 35 looking at, by looking at the statistical table we know the value is 2.0 six zero right so we just plug in the value into the formula this is 19.92 minus 2.060 multiply with 5.73 divide by square root of 36 right so we do the same on the right hand side So this is equal to 95%. Uh, 
right uh, so the value on the lower confidence limit is 17.9527 and the value of upper confidence limit is 21.8873 so this is the probably uh, the confidence interval right we can interpret uh, this by we have 95% that the mean of the population sample is between 17.95 and 21.88, right? So this is for example number one, right? Now look at example number two, right? So in example number two, a group of 30 people lost weight have uh, 30 people lost, uh, lost weight have an average of 5 kilo in a week with a standard deviation of 1.3 kilo by going through some special dieting process so assuming that the weight loss follow normally distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square and variance equal to sigma square are unknown Right. So we want to construct 95% confidence interval for the true average weight loss for people who go through this dieting process. Right. In this example, uh, we do not know the population variance. Right. Then n is equal to n is equal to 30. X bar is equal to 5 kilos and standard deviation sample standard deviation is 1.3 kilos so since we do not know the population standard deviation right so we're going to use um, theorem number two since the population the sample size is uh, very small right and then uh, we just plug in the value since we're going to use a sample uh, theorem number two x bar minus t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 s over square root of n this is x bar plus t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 s over square root of n this is 95 uh, percent so this is the area that we want to find so let's draw the confidence uh, distribution curve so this is a 95 percent this is 0 0.025 0 0.025 right so t negative t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 so t 0 0.025 n minus 1 is 29 is equal to 2.045 2.045 right 2.045 so we just plug in the value into the equation so probability of this is 5 minus 2.045 the standard deviation is equal to 5 divided by square root of 30 right and then this is 5 plus 2.045 5 over square root of 30 this is 95 percent right so the lower confidence limit is 5 uh, sorry 4 point this is 4.5146 and the upper confidence limit is 5.48 Right, so this is how we solve the problem for example number two. Right, <coughs> so now we move to example number three. So let this one okay, example number three a random sample of 65 observations from a normal population produce the following summary statistics we have the summation of x is equal to 700 and then uh, this is the 
summation of x minus x bar squared. Uh, this is actually equal to 42.38, right? So, assume that the mean mu and the variance are unknown. So, we don't know the population variance. We want to calculate the point estimator for mean and uh, for standard deviation, right? So, let's do the first one. A, x bar is equal to summation of x over n. So, we know the summation of x is equal to 700 divided by the sample size is equal to 65. So this is equal to 10.7692, right? And then uh, for sample standard uh, sample variance, uh, the formula is summation of x i minus x bar squared divided by n capital N, and this is uh, sorry, this is n minus one, right? N minus one. And then this is to be equal to 66.21875, right? So this is a point estimate. So to answer for B, right, B, find 95% confidence interval for the mean and standard deviation. So since N is more than or equal to 30, right, since n is more than 30 and population variance are unknown right so remember in theorem number one i said before in theorem number one it says that when the we know the uh, the population variance is known then we use z alpha divided by 2 provided the sample size is uh it doesn't count the sample size. When with the variance is known, we are going to use z alpha divided by two. So, uh, in some cases, the population variance is known, but the sample size is non-normal population, right? So, uh, when the sample size is unknown, right, and provided n equal to n is large enough, so we can use z alpha divided by two, right? Multiply with s divided by square root of n. So uh, this is a variance unknown, right? So we're going to use theorem number one with a bit of uh, modification because uh, the sample size is large. We can apply a central limit theorem, central limit theorem to approximate the normal distribution right so we're going to use x bar plus minus z alpha divided by 2 s over square root of n so why we use this one because the sample size is large more than 30 right when the sample size is more than 30 we can apply central limit theorem to approximate normal distribution right so x bar is equal to 10 point 7692 plus minus and this is uh, z alpha divided by 2 this is uh, what we want to find is 95 percent confidence interval so let me let me calculate it we show the proper way of calculation right so probability of uh, x bar minus z alpha divided by 2 s over square root of n this is mu x bar plus z alpha divided by 2 s over square root of n so this is a 95 percent so let's draw always draw a normal distribution curve to add to to make sure we uh, we know the area that we want to cover so this is alpha divided by 2 z alpha divided by 2 so 95%, this is 0 0.025, this is 0 0.025. Z 0 0.025 is equal to 1.96. So this one is 10.7692 minus 1.96 multiply with S equal to um, square root of 
sample variance is equal to square root of 66.21875 this one should be equal to 8.1375 right so 8.1375 divided by square root of 65 So the same value on the right hand side, 1.96, 8.1375 divided by square root of 65. This is going to be 95%. So the area, uh, the, the value on the lower confidence limit is 8.79009. The, the value on the upper confidence limit is 12.7475. So this is the way of presenting interval, pres uh, interval estimation. Or we can put it into uh, probability form. This is 8.7909, 12.7475. Right. Okay, let's move to the next example, which is example number four, right? So, the following are values of x from a random sample of size n equal to 15, taken from a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma squared. So, the variance, population variance are unknown, right? So, we want to calculate the point estimator for mean mu and the variance sigma squared so basically point estimate right so this is the value just first in using calculator we just need to clear all the memory right so click on mode 3 and select 1 minus variance 1 we input all the value inside the calculator 20 And the last should be 35, 35, and 34, right? So, there are basically 15 observations. We can recheck by, uh, the value that we already entered, right? So, once OK, we click on AC, click Shift, 1, and we want the variance for X bar number 2 x bar is equal to 33.33 so x bar is equal to 33.13 right and the standard the variance is equal to the standard deviation should be equal to 4 4 yeah so 9.21 so Sample standard deviation 9.21 to 2 right so we have we have n equal to 15 so now to decide which formula that we want to use look at the statement they are give to us variance population variance are known and the sample size is less than 30 we're going to use theorem number two so theorem number two if you want to find 95 percent confidence interval for the population mean so this is probability of x bar minus t alpha divided by 2 n minus 1 s over square root of n This is equal to 95%. Let's draw the uh, distribution curve. Always draw the distribution curve so then we cannot lose, uh, lose the information. So this is negative alpha divided by 2, t 
PR for divided by 2, this is a 95 cent. 0 0.025, this is 0 0.025. So we know from a statistical table, 0 T, 0 0.025 with degree of freedom N minus 1, 15 minus 1 is equal to 14. This is equal to 2.145. So we just plug in the value into the formula. Probability of x is equal to 33.13 minus 2.145, 9.22 divided by square root of 15. The same value on the right hand side. This is equal to 95%, right? So lower confidence limit is 28.0278 and upper confidence limit is 38.2388. So we have 95% confidence that uh, the population mean will lies between 28.02 and 38.2388 right so let's move to the next uh, part which is uh, the different uh, of between mean estimation of different between means for known variance right so when we have two population right uh, which is mu1 and mu2 and variance number 1 and variance number 2 right, a point estimator of difference between two population is given by the statistics x bar 1 minus x bar 2 because we want to find the difference between means so this situation is when the population variance for both are known right? the population variance are known for both distribution right so now look at theorem number 3. In theorem number 3, if independent sample of size N1 and N2 right, are drawn from a random, uh, at random from a two population, right, either discrete or continuous with mean equal to mu1 and mu2 respectively and variance sigma1 squared and sigma2 squared respectively, then the sampling distribution of the different means is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is approximately normal distribution with mean and variance is given by mean x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is mu 1 minus mu 2 then the variance for x bar 1 minus x bar 2 the standard uh, error plus standard error for the second distribution right so the z score, the z value should be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 right, because we want to find the difference between the two mean and minus with the population variance 1 and population variance 2, uh, population mean and minus population mean 2 and this is a standard error. Right, so this is what having a standard normal distribution. So the difference itself is having a standard normal distribution, right? So by having theorem number three, right, from a theorem number three, we can derive uh, the interval estimation in theorem number four. So in theorem number four, uh, if x bar one and x bar two, right, uh, are mean of independent random sample of size n1 and n2 from a population with known variance that right? means the population variance is known right so the confidence interval is um, this one so how to get this one we need to derive the equation from z distribution right so if you want to derive let's say From the standard uh, interval estimation, negative z alpha divided by 2, this is z 
z alpha divided by 2 with a probability of 1 minus alpha. So z we just substitute in the middle, x bar 1 minus x bar 2. And this is uh, minus mu 1 minus mu 2 right, divided by sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. This is a square root. It is z alpha divided by 2. This is z alpha divided by 2. Right? 1 minus alpha. So we just move this part to the both side and this part to the both side. We will get theorem number 4. Right? So theorem number 4 says that uh, the interval estimation for difference between two means is x bar 1 minus x bar 2. This is a point estimate. Point estimate. And this part is a margin of error. Same for the both part on the right hand side. Right? So, now, let's look at example number 1. But before we go to example number 1, there is a note Theorem number 4 can be used for independence random sample from a non-normal population with unknown variance as well. This is unknown variance, right? Unknown. Unknown variance with N1 and N2 are large, right? More than 30, more than 30 for the both uh, sample, right? This is for unknown, right? So now look at example number 1. So this is a long segment. Alright, um, example number one, construct a 94% confidence interval for the difference between the mean lifetimes of two kind of light bulbs. So we have two kind of light bulbs. So given that a random sample of 40 light bulb of the first kind and last uh, kind last on average for 418 hours continuous use on uh, and 50 light bulb or the second kind lasted on average 402 hours continuous use right so let's jot down the informa the variable information we have we want to find what 100% 1 minus alpha percent is equal to 94% and 1 is equal to 40 x bar 1 is equal to uh, 418 and n2 is equal to 50 x bar 2 is equal to 408 and with the population standard deviation unknown right so in this case the population standard deviation unknown to be sigma 1 squared equal to 26 sigma 2 squared or equal to 20 Two, right so sigma 1 squared is equal to 26 sigma 2 squared equal to 22 right <clears throat> right so um, the area that we want to find is 94 percent so this is a 94%. This area should be equal to 0 0.03 and this area also 0 0.03. So this is Z alpha divided by 2. Z alpha divided by 2. Because we have the population variance is known. So Z, Z uh, 0 0.03 should be equal to 1.88 so by using formula from theorem number 4 right theorem number 4 so we will get x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus z alpha divided by 2 and this is the standard error of the difference sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2 so this one should be 40 um, 
18 minus 408. So this is the x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus minus uh, 1.88. The square root of uh, sigma 1 squared is 26 over 40 and this is 22 over 50 right so if you calculate this one the lower confidence limit should be 6.3 and the upper confidence limit is 25.7 so now what we can conclude is that we have 94 uh, percent confidence that the difference between the two mean is between 6.3 and 20, uh, 25.7 7 so this is comma or well, if you can put it into a proper form it should be probability of 6.3 this is mu 1 minus mu 2 right and this is 25.7 equal to 94 percent right so this is how we answer for example number one right so now look at example number two. This is very long example, right? So a study uh, was conducted with, in which two type of engine A and B are compared, right? <clears throat> so gas mileage in miles per gallon was measured. Fifty experiments were conducted for engine type A, and seventy-five for engine type B. So N1 and A lah, huh? and A is equal to 50, and B is equal to 75, right? The gasoline use uh, and another condition were held constant. The average gas gas mileage was 36 for engine A, and 42 for engine B. So X bar A is equal to 36 x bar b is equal to 42 so we want to find 96 percent confidence interval right where the population mean gas mileage for engine a and b respectively for mu a and mu b assume that the population standard deviation are population standard deviation are 6 and 8 for engine A and B. So sigma A is equal to 6, sigma B is equal to 8. Right. So knowing that the population variance is known, we want to find the difference between two means. Right. So we use theorem number 4. So x bar 1, x bar A minus x bar B. So this is plus minus, uh, or if I can put it into the proper form, it's going to be a messy, right? So let's put it into the proper form. So P, X bar 1, A minus X bar B minus Z alpha divided by 2. This is uh, sigma A divided by N A plus sigma b divided by nb so this is mu a minus mu b right so the same parameter on the right hand side right this is b plus z alpha divided by 2 sigma a squared over n a plus sigma b squared over n b Right, so this is equal to 96%. So once uh, we have the value, input the value into the equation. Right, so let's use this shorter form of equation. Right, is plus minus. So z alpha divided by 2. Sigma 1A squared Sigma B squared over NA and B right so this one should be uh, 42 minus 36 
plus minus right the equation the distribution should be we want to find 95 96 percent here and this is 0 0.02 this is 0 0.02 Negative z alpha divided by 2 z alpha divided by 2 so z 0 0.02 should be equal to 2.05 so this one 2.05 plug in the value very simple so this is 6 square over n a is 36 plus 8 squared over 42 the lower confidence limit for this one is 3.43 and the upper confidence limit is 8.57 right let's put it into the proper form so 3.43 mu a minus mu b right this is less than 8.57 right equal to 90 six percent so we have a 96 percent uh confidence that uh, different of two mean is between 3.43 and 8.57 right Link, I think 